My name's Jason. I grew up hearing a story about my great-grandfather's ashes being scattered at sea. Then the wind blew and they ended up having to sweep him off the deck. And then when my grandfather died, we went out into the Solent and my uncle scattered the ashes over the side and the wind blew again and I actually got an eyeful. That won't be happening with me because um, I press human ashes after they've been cremated into vinyl records. I sort of came up with, well, you know, what would I want to do? It was really more like a, a way of getting used to the idea of it. And I kind of took it on as a bit of a joke. And with a friend of mine, Stu, he helped me put the website together. I don't know why, Stu, but see the road's shut. How do we get to, a, to Barry's Lane? Can you go up this road here? Next left. Barry's Lane's, yeah, it's what, it's yeah. just down there, it's a, just down there, a couple on the left. All yeah. oh, right, okay, so can we go down there then? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it's I just love sounds. I think sound, audio sounds are much better than photographs. A lot of the music that I do is based on sounds that I hear around me. Even just, you know, hearing your own little sniff or you hear something happening in the background which brings loads of memories back. So that was probably part of what made the concept come about. I seem to remember when I was, when I was a kid, I always fancied having a museum. And then one day I looked at what I was living in and I realised that, uh, although I'd forgotten the original concept, I'd just carried on doing it. <laughs> so yeah, I don't throw stuff away very often. And my mother never threw anything away. Now, John Hobson lived in Scarborough. I mean, she was Madeline Dorothy, but she was always known as Madge. Her maiden name was Winter. So she was, she was always known as Madge Winter. She had a phenomenal memory and she could remember facts and details. I mean, right up to time of her death, she was still, you know, there was nothing wrong with her memory. It was amazing. And she did tell good stories. We met one time at, a, at the pub and he mentioned that he, he had his mother's ashes, his dear old mum's, I think he refers to her as sweetly. And what he said, which really pricked my ears up, was that he had brilliantly recorded her with a mini disc, speaking about his family, about his history and the family's history, all the stuff which I think is sort of gold dust for an Anne Vinerly record, really. The ultimate, as far as I'm concerned. I'm sure a lot of people would think it was creepy, a lot of people would think it was sacrilegious, but I know my mother wouldn't have. She would have thought it was a hoot. So, you know, I think she would have encouraged me, really. It's very simple at the end of the day. In effect, you're making a record as you normally do. You have your audio, and then from that, they make tin stampers, which is like a reverse of a vinyl. So instead of the grooves and the valleys, you have kind of mountains, if you like. And then those plates are used to press a piece of vinyl. And what we do at that stage is put the ash onto the vinyl just before it's pressed. So it's basically squished into the, the record. It does compromise the sound. It's exactly what you don't want to be happening at a pressing plant normally, but those pops and crackles are them. The good thing about death is it makes you live. It makes you sort of make the most of what you've got. And sadly, you often hear people say that when they're 
close to death, and they know it's they they know when or it's going to be very soon, and, and um, that's when most people start to really live. So I think that maybe if we were more exposed to it and or made to made to plan for it a bit more earlier, people might actually have a better life. He knew about the service before he passed away. And he's got lovely little touches like uh, the barcodes there have the, the date, uh, birth dates of him and his wife and his children. And then it's his favorite music on there. And um, again, the label has images of him and then you can hopefully see. I would at this moment, because that's a point, I think it changes as you happily keeps changing, as new things happen. Um, it would definitely have my voice on there. It would no doubt have my daughter's and Harriet's voice on there, voices on there as well. It would have to have some of my music on there. I'm always trying to write something specific for it, but um, it's really hard. I mean, the thing you do notice is the way you are viewed through the eyes of younger family members um, is you, you, you really you put into a mould which you maybe don't fit. So I suppose, in a way, it would be nice to have to be able to record a few stories to put on to a record that um, didn't make me sound like such a granddad. Uh, you know, I'm more like uh, the man, uh, well, the man I was, if not the man I still am. <laughs> it's just something that, you know, your great, great, great grandson or granddaughter can be sitting in their room listening, reading the cover and learning a bit about you really, and about the time when I am or was here. <laughs> sound is vibrating you, the room, and it's actually moving the air around you and that's what's so powerful about hearing someone's voice on a, on a record. They're actually moving the air and it's, um, for me, that's powerful. We took him to Leeds when he was nine months old because the first two years of our married life we spent in Leeds. So when John was nine months old, the old ladies said, well, I don't suppose you'd be going for a holiday with a baby being so young, but how about coming to us? For a while, so we went, and there was some uh, chappy in Leeds lived nearby. He had a, um, a coach business, you know, and he used to run trips, day trips out, and he had this one to Scarborough. So of course we all went. They're all ladies. And Il nobile doma la sua ira e raffrena i suoi istinti. L'ira si erge alta come una montagna. Gli istinti affogano il cuore come le profondità di un lago. L'ira deve essere domata con l'arresto e gli istinti devono essere frenati dalla capacità moderatrice. Il lago racchiude le acque tra le sue sponde. Um, I've got another thing here. We don't just do, um, you know, other things could be this, for example, is a, it's actually a meteorite that we pressed into the record. And it was a, an Italian artist um, and that's a meteorite which she had crushed and she sent and then on the vinyl and this is the sounds of a tornado, a volcano and an earthquake which is quite a nice one. So I mean there's other things you can you can put in as well, it doesn't, it doesn't just have to be human cremains I think you call them in the States. <laughs> 